Hey everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in today's tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at a dialog system that we can create. We can see we have an example in front of us. After a couple seconds, our dialog starts up, and we can go through the dialog by pressing any key. And you can see it kind of just goes at the bottom conversation in between a cat and a dog. And when the dialog finishes, it will delete itself so that we could move around or we could carry on with our game. So we're going to take a look at how we can do this. So let's roll the intro and let's get right to the code. So before we start, I just want to tell you that this code will be found on GitHub. It's under my Game Maker cast and you can find it under the dialogue scripts. If you're not sure how to work uh, in GitHub, all you need to do is download the code by using a zip file here, or you can go over to the releases and you can grab the latest release, which is 1.1. You can download this file. This file is what we're gonna actually use to import into our game. So let's switch over to Game Maker Studio and import it and start working. So in Game Maker Studio, I'm gonna go to tools and say import local package. I'm going to find the package that I have and I'm going to open it and you can see that it comes with some scripts already. I'm just going to go ahead and add all. You can see it's added it all over to the right and I'll just say import. Now all of those scripts are added into my project here. So we have a pretty basic room. We have just an asset which is our graphic and then we have an object weight and that is our room entirely. In the object wait, all we're doing is we're waiting a few seconds here or one second to be particular, and then we are creating an instance of our dialogue. So this would be like if you walk up to something and you press the interaction key, we would create an object dialogue, which would start the object, or sorry, start the dialogue. If we take a look at the dialogue object, it is completely empty. So if I were to run my game right now, you'll see that we don't have any dialogue, we don't have any black bars, it's just the screen. So the first thing I want to start with is the black bars coming up from the bottom. To do this, we'll have a create event, a step event, and then finally a draw GUI event. In the create event, we need to figure out where the position of the bar is going to start and where the position of the bar is going to stop. So that means that we need two variables. We can get away with using a position underscore bar y and a position underscore bar y end. And what we want to do is we want to set the bar y to be the display get GUI height, which will give us the bottom of our GUI layer. The ending, what we could do is we could set it to the y position minus 100 to bring it up 100 pixels. Now you might be wondering, what can we do with this function here? Well, right now, because I only have one room and my room is not changing size and I don't have any viewports, my GUI layer is gonna be 1024 by 768. You can set this to anything you want by using a simple command called display underscore set GUI size, which will give it a width and height. So right now, this is kind of what it looks like, room width and room height. So this will cover my entire room, making my GUI start at zero and going all the way down to the room width and height. What we can do is we could easily upscale this by dividing this in half. So if we think about this, what it's actually doing is it's taking half the room width, which would be here, and half the room height. So we'll get it somewhere in the middle, but Game Maker Studio is going to automatically stretch that to be the resolution of our game. So it will be automatically upscaled. Now, I don't want anything upscaled, so I'm just going to go ahead and take away my division here, and I'm going to leave it like this. So in order to get the bar moving, let's go to the draw GUI, and let's start off with some of these draw commands that we imported. You can see we have a draw set, a draw reset, and a draw align. Even though they're not really formatted, the draw set will allow us to set a particular color, such as C black, and an alpha in one single call. And then we have a draw reset, which will reset the color to white and in full alpha of one. So this is just a quick way to set everything up for drawing. Now what we wanna do is we wanna use a draw rectangle. And as you know, a draw rectangle takes the X and Y positions for start, the ending, and then whether or not it's an outline. So we want our rectangle, if we bring up our room, to start over here on the left and expand all the way over to the right. So our X position for the first time will be zero. Our Y position, we want it to be all the way at the bottom. So we will use a display 
underscore get and we will say uh, get GUI height so that will put us all the way at the bottom now we need it to go all the way over to the top or sorry to the right so we could use a get GUI width and now we can use our position underscore bar underscore y we don't want this to be an outline so we will say it's false so we have an error here so let's close my room maximize this and see where our error is let's fix that so now if we run everything you shouldn't actually notice anything because we're not moving that position so the next thing we need to do is take this position bar and make it line up with the uh, bar end position to do that we'll switch over to the step event and we're just going to use a lerp command so we'll say whatever our current position is at the y location we're going to lerp between the current position and the end position by 20 percent each step so if we do this and we hit f5 you can see after a second our black bar will start to come in nice so the only thing we want to do is we want that bar to come in before we're able to display text. So that means that we need a flag or a trigger before we can do that. If we go back over to the create event, let's create a boolean called can display text. Let's set it to, uh, let's set it to false right now. Now in the step event, we need to make sure, or we need to say when the position Y is equal to the end position, then we can display the text. To do this, we could just say if the absolute value of the position bar y minus position bar y end is less or equal to five pixels. Well, once that happens, then we can say, yes, you can display text. So we'll set that to true. Now, before we even start displaying some text, we're going to have to go to the create event and actually create a dialog. You can see that over here on the right, we have a whole bunch of dialog functions. Let's start off by initializing the dialog by typing dialog underscore in it. Now, if we take a look at this script right here, you can see that we're using global variables and we have two variables. We have a messages, which will be an array. And then we have an index, which will store what position we are in the array. Once we initialize it, we have to add some dialog into the array and we can do this by using the dialog underscore add the dialog underscore add will take a sprite and some text so i'm going to go ahead and copy what i have for a conversation into my project okay so you can see that i'm including a picture and if i go to my sprite so you can see i'm referring to the picture of a cat or picture of the dog then it just have some text in here if we look at dialog add, what we're doing is we're grabbing the picture and the message, which are the arguments. We're checking to see if the dialog index is negative one. So if it is, we want to start at zero. Otherwise, we're going to increase that dialog index by one and therefore adding to the array each time we call this. The final things we do is add the picture and the message to the array. If you're not sure what we're doing here, if we take a look at dialog enums for enumerator, you can see that we have an enumerator here and all this is doing is transforming picture into the number zero and messages into the number one. So that's an easy way for us to figure out which one we want in the array. Do we want the picture or do we want the message? Now that we're done adding everything, we need to tell it to reset that index. Well, luckily enough, we can use dialog reset. And if we check that out quickly, that's just resetting the dialog index so that we can start at zero. Okay, so now I think it's time to actually display some text. Let's go over to our draw GUI and we need to check that Boolean that we had. So we'll say if can display text. So if can display equals true, so we could write it like that if we want it to, but I'll, I'll keep it as a short form for now. So if we can display text, what do we want to do? Well, let's set on our alignment. So we could use draw set and we can use H align or V align, but I'm going to use the draw set align, which is a function in the draw here. And that just allows us to set both in one go. So I want the FA center for the horizontal and the middle for the vertical alignment. Now I want to draw a sprite make sure i spell that right i'm going to draw a sprite at whatever the index is for our dialogue so that means whatever the current person is or animal or object that's talking we want to grab that sprite and draw luckily we have another dialogue function called dialogue get picture and then we'll get the current picture of the from the uh, array itself so you can see here we're going to the index and then just passing back the picture 
Now we need to know what index we're going to be drawing at, and because I'm not using any animation, I'll just use the index of zero. Now the X position, if we take a look at our room, I am going to make a little bit of padding, so I'm going to give it 64 pixels over to the right, so I'll say 64. And now I need to display it kind of at the bottom. Well, if you remember up here, we just, we got the GUI height, so we can just use that and we can bring it back up, say 60 pixels. And then we are working with a hundred pixels. So I could say minus 50 to put it in the bottom. Now, if I have everything set up, let's see what happens. If I hit F5, we should have those black bars and hopefully a picture of a cat, which is the first item in our array. Now let's work on the actual text. I will be storing the text in a variable called message, and I'm going to be using another function that we have written here called got picture text. If we take a look at it, it's very similar to the picture one, except we are, let me close my room, we're just returning the message instead of the sprite. So right here, this will store whatever the current text is in there. So I could easily just say draw underscore text, and let's draw it at the X location and let's use, let's say display, let's put it kind of in the middle. So I'll copy my GUI width here and I'll divide it that by two. And then I will copy my height because coding is all about copying and pasting. And I will bring it up 60 pixels and I will just display the message. So let's hit F5 and see how that worked. Once the game is running, you can see that now we have a picture and we have a dog. Now at this point, you could kind of skip ahead if you didn't want the characters to show up on the screen one at a time. But if you do want the characters to show up on the screen one at a time, we're going to have to add a few more variables. So back in the create event where we have can display text, I'm going to put another variable called character index and set it to zero. So this will be the counter for every character that exists in the string. In the step event, we'll be using this index to increase by one each time. However, I don't want it to increase every single step. So I'm going to be using delta time and I can say if we can display our text, then in here, I want to say if my delta time, which is the number of seconds each frame has passed, mod room speed times 0 0.1. So that would give us a tenth of a second equals zero so that if the remainder of this divided by whatever room speed is which is 60 times 0 0.01 if the remainder is zero then we'll come into here and i can say character index plus equal one now i'm going to leave this as is but we will get a little bit of an error however we will see some of this working so let's switch back to our draw GUI. And in our draw GUI, after our message, let's make a new variable called text. And we want to use the function called string copy. Now this is a game maker function that allows us to copy a part of a string. So I want to copy part of message starting at the index of zero and go into my character index. That means that when I draw my text, all I have to say is I want to draw the message or sorry, the text and not the message. So let's hit F5 and let the game run, and you can see the error. Once our dialog comes up, we should see this, and now nothing is happening. However, in the background, our character index is still going up and up, so we could run into some issues. So to get around this, I'm going to implement a key press to move on to the next index. So let's go to the create event and create a new variable called is waiting for key press. Let's set that to false. Now let's go back to our step event and modify our if statement. If we can't display the text and we are not waiting for the key press, then we will increase our character index by one. However, if our character index is bigger or equal to the string length of our dialogue underscore get text, so that will be the text of the current dialogue that's happening. If it is bigger than that, then we will say is waiting for key press equals true. Now let's switch back to the draw GUI. And at the very bottom, after we draw our text, we could say if is waiting for the key press, then let's draw some information on the screen to let the player know that they need to press any key. We can set our alignment with draw set align, and let's use the left aligned and we'll keep it at FA middle. Next, let's set our text to say something like press any key. And now we need to 
figure out what the length is of that text. So we will use a string width function, which will take the text and basically tell us how long it is in pixels. Now we can use our draw text transform and we can draw it at the right side of the screen. So we will use the display get GUI width and let's take away the full length of that text that we are writing in pixels. Let's put it almost all the way at the bottom. So we will use the draw, sorry, get GUI height and let's take away 20 pixels. Let's add in the string that we want to draw. Now we have to add our scaling options in. So I'll draw at 75% and then the angle will be zero. So if we hit F5, let's see if we have any errors after we implemented that code. We should get our picture and we have our Hey Dog. However, we don't get the message. So let's close it. And I can see right here, I'm using display get height and I need to use display get GUI height. So let me paste that in and hit F5 now and let's see if this works. So we have our text and once it's finished, we have a press any key to continue. Right now we can hammer on those keys and nothing will happen. So let's actually make that work. So in the step event, we know right here that we can display the text. And then we know right here, we are not waiting for a key press, but if we are waiting for a key press, so we'll say else, we can say if the keyboard underscore check and let's use the release and we'll use the VK any key so anytime a key is pressed we will come in here and once we're in here we could say uh, we are not no longer waiting for a key press so we'll set that false we might as well reset the character index count to zero the other thing we need to do is we need to tell our dialog to go to the next one so we'll we we will use the dialog next function and all that is doing is it is increasing our index by one now let's see if we can make it through a little bit of a dialog before we get to an error so we have our cat, we press that key, we have our dog. Let me try the space key and that's still working. How about the letter T? And you may have noticed that this actually takes a long time. So maybe what we wanna do is have something where we press a key, it automatically finishes. Now we should get an error here. And we do because even though we're telling our dialogue to go next, there is no information at the end of that. There's no dialogue after that. So we could just check for if we have a dialogue end and we'll check that in one second, but what we want to do is we just want to destroy that instance. All dialog end is doing is it's saying, get me the count of how many items are in the array. And if the count is less or equal to the dialog index, then we will return true or false depending on where our index is. Obviously, if this returns true, then we're going to destroy this index, which will end the dialog. Now, you may have remembered I said some of that was a little bit long, so maybe what we want to do is implement some kind of key press so it automatically finishes the sentence. That's pretty easy to do. We could just copy this code right here. And while we're in here, so we're saying we can display text and we are not waiting for a key press, then we can say up here, we'll say if any key was pressed, then all that we want to do is set the character. And if I could spell that right, character index is going to be the string underscore length. It's actually just this code right here. So let's copy and paste this guy in here. So we're setting automatically the character index to whatever the character index should be. And then uh, what will happen is we will wait for a key press. So let's hit F5. Let's see if this thing is all working now. So we should get this, hey dog, we have any key and that works. Okay, and the next one, I will press the button twice and you can see it finishes and now we should end the dialogue and we could carry on with our game. So this dialogue system, it's pretty easy. I'm hoping that you will download it and take a little bit of a look. It's using the global variables, so that's one thing to make sure you check out that you're not using these variables in any parts of your other games or certain things will mess up. I tried to keep all my variables named as dialogue, but you never know what will happen. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you've learned some things and I hope you join me in the next video. And in today's video, we have XCOM 2 and two DLCs to download. It's free, first come, first serve. So look for the link in the video above and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching.